Well, greetings and salutations, uh, Series 7 test takers. This is Series 7 Guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. Uh, your best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel. Uh, but if you don't have a Kaplan Q Bank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. With my Guru 10 discount code at checkout, you can get a Q Bank for about 60 bucks. And for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on Kaplan content. Remember, the easiest way to use the channel and or Reddit is the search bar. I've done this more than once. And so, you know, if you're looking for a particular video in the search bar on the channel, put in like margin and videos that are relevant to that will come up or in the Reddit margin, or in this case, mini bond purchased at a premium. So when we buy a municipal bond uh, we purchased in the secondary market at 102, uh, the IRS thinks that you don't take your last buck and buy a mini bond. And what they think you'd like to do is realize that loss by holding it to maturity whenever it's convenient for you. And the IRS says, no, 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 no. We're going to let make you take that in little bitty hits along the way. They're going to make you do straight line amortization downward. Straight line amortization upward is called accretion. Straight line amortization downward is called decretion, not testable. If you get this as a test question, it's practical application. It has about 50% probability. When I'm debriefing people, half the time people say they encountered this as a performance opportunity. That's why I call test questions, half say they did not. So the first thing as a test taker is we have to recognize that indeed, this is a muni bond purchased at a premium. Now, 102 and a half, remember, is 1,025. So anytime you get a percentage par, remember the quotes are an eighth. And so, you know, half would be, you know, $5. If you can't remember how to do that, you take one divided by two times 10. That's half, one half of 1% of par. I think it's easier to just think a point is 10, so half a point is $5. Uh, the bond has five years to maturity. So as I said, the IRS is going to let you realize that $25 loss at maturity. They're going to make you write it down so you're not going to have any loss when this bond matures. And so that's the point of making you do straight line amortization downward. Two years later, uh, I sell the bond for 102. The tax consequence is. Now, if you miss this completely, you're going to say that's a $5 loss because you paid $1,025 and you sold it for $1,020. But no, no, no. You have to do straight line amortization downwards. So when you buy a mini bond at a premium, your cost basis looks like I got the typo there, must be adjusted downward decretion. So we're paying $1,025. We have 10 years to maturity, $1,000. So it's kind of like the first step of yield to maturity. So we got to figure out what the adjustment is going to be each year to our cost basis. So we're losing $25 over five years if we hold it to maturity. So the adjustment that we're going to have to make to our cost basis each year is $5. So that's important because it says we held it for two years. So we held it for two years. We should have adjusted our cost basis by $10. $5, two years, that's 10 so our adjusted cost base here is 1,015. So our original cost base was 1,025. We made the adjustment and the adjusted cost base is now 1,015. Now it says we sell for 1,020. So that's our sales proceeds. Our sales proceeds is 1,020, 102% of par. Our adjusted cost base is 1,015. And so the answer to the question is we have a $5 capital gain. So again, this is a muni bond purchased at a premium and how we adjust the cost base. We actually have a recapture here. Again, 50% probability on your exam. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 exam is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 exam is hard. And I'll see you for the next explication request.